Today we're going to talk about how to create an instant cloud flow for Dynamics 365. So this continues our series where we're gearing all of this information towards somebody with a Dynamics 365 or CRM background who's transitioning to the newer tools and starting to leverage Power Automate in place of some things that were done with workflow. So with that in mind, let's dive in a little bit and we're going to talk about what an instant cloud flow is, what it replaces in the standard Dynamics 365 platform or what you can think of, and how to build it. So an instant cloud flow is something that's triggered with a click of a button. So if you think about Dynamics 365 or older versions of CRM, these are on-demand workflows or task flows that used to be in the apps. And this is just something you can replace going forward. Um, I'm not suggesting that you go into your Dynamics system and rewrite all of your on-demand workflows to be instant cloud flows. But you know, you could transition some over to that and start using the new technology because there are really cool benefits to it. So that's what an instant cloud flow is in the simplest terms that I can explain to you, assuming you have a CRM background. If not, that's okay. We're going to go through, we're going to build a cloud flow, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we run it. So the first thing I want to show you how to do is add a new Cloudflow to your solution file. So I'm at make.powerapps.com. I'm in my trial environment and I have a solution file currently open, aptly named Awesome Solution. Now what I want to do is click on New and then Automation. And if I hover over Cloud, I can see there's Automated, Instant, and Scheduled. And obviously for this use case, we're going to select Instant. That's going to build our shell, and then we can start to build our flow. Now, before we move on and name our flow and add our trigger, let's take a look at what our options are for choosing how to trigger this flow. You can manually trigger your flow, which is for your mobile app users. They'd have to navigate to their Power Automate app, and then they could click a button, and that would launch your flow. We've got Power Apps. We've got this really cool one that involves Power Virtual Agents. So when a Power Virtual Agent calls a flow, We've got the newer Microsoft Dataverse connector option here, which is when a flow step is run from a business process flow. So that's really cool if you want to embed this within a business process flow. You can have it from Teams, a OneDrive, Power BI, and then there's a couple SharePoint. There's Excel, because everybody loves Excel as a database. You got HTTP and webhooks. Now this is the one that we're looking for in our use case where we're CRM focused. And this comes from the Microsoft Dataverse Legacy Connector, which I know is confusing. There are so many connectors out there that touch the database, and it's hard to remember which ones to use. So if you are looking for a user to access something, a similar user experience to selecting an on-demand workflow, this is the one that you want. The trigger you want is called when a row is selected, Microsoft, Microsoft Dataverse Legacy. So we're going to add a flow name. Um, we'll do schedule opportunity for follow-up. That's a really good use case. And then I'm going to click create. Then I'm brought to my flow. You can see the trigger pulled over. I'm already logged in, so I got to skip the authentication part. If you haven't logged in or if you're not doing this from a service that you're currently logged in, you will have to authenticate by providing your login credentials. So this is pretty simple. You're going to select the environment where you want this flow to run. So I'm going to do this in my default environment. And then we have table name. Now this is a list of all the tables in your Dynamics 365 system or your Dataverse if you're not using Dynamics 365. And I'm going to select opportunities. Then we're simply going to go to next step. We're choosing our, our operations. So we've got our trigger now. My user is going to manually open up an opportunity and select that they want this flow to run. So now we're gonna take our additional steps. So for this, I'm going to search for Dataverse. There's Dataverse, and make a new row. So that's exactly what I wanna do. So I'm gonna create a new account. I'm sorry, a new activity. So we're gonna do a task. And then you can see once it selects the task, it's going to give you all of the available fields here, which is awesome. So regarding opportunities, I'm gonna click in here and I want dynamic content, which is gonna pull things from my prior step. Um, and I'm going to use my opportunity. Here it is. 
the unique identifier of the opportunity. So now I'm going to be adding this task as a follow-up and we will call this follow-up do. And then again, you can, might help if I spell correctly, you can click on the box here and use dynamic content from everything on the prior step, which is our trigger. So again, our user is selecting a specific opportunity and then we want to create a follow-up task. So I do have the availability to put all the information in here. So follow-up do, and let's pull dynamic information about the potential customer. So this mapping exercise has been really simple so far, right? Everything's pretty straightforward. We get a little more complicated when we come into the due date field. So when I click in this, it shows me all the date and time fields that are on that table. So on a row in that table, these are what my options are. Now, that's not what I want because I don't want my due date to be one of those dates. Let's say I want my due date to be three days after my user clicks that button. They select that row. Well, that's where I need to come into expressions. And I'm going to scroll down here to my date and time functions. And we have add seconds, add minutes, add hours, add days. So I'm going to click add days and it tells me what I need to do here. So I need to get something about the time. And what I actually want is for this to just be three days after now, after a user selects it. So I'm going to click UTC now to pop that in. So that's defining the timestamp. And I'm going to go outside of that parentheses and I'm going to click a comma. And it tells me here, again, it's kind of guiding me through the whole process. So after that comma, I need to give the days. So that's an integer format. How many days do I want to wait? So for this, it's three, like we talked about. Click OK. And now we have a formula here for our due date. So you can continue mapping here. So I'm gonna grab like the owner and make sure that we map all that over. And you can add as, as much as you want in this row. And I like clicking save as I go. So that's, that's it. We can, I mean, you can come in here and you can add additional rows of data. I don't think we have to go through that. I think you understand how this works and, and what this does. So once this flow has been saved, your next steps are to run the flow checker, make sure everything works well, and then you test it. So you're gonna manually test it. And once you're done, what it looks like to the user is, is this. They're gonna open up an opportunity and they're gonna click flow and then they're gonna run the flow that you just wrote, which is awesome. So one last thing, this is really important. If it's not working for someone, if they don't see the cloud flow, if it doesn't run for them, take a look at their security role. If you come to the customization tab of security role, make sure they have the run flows permission. So that is a great troubleshooting tip for you if your users report any errors. So that's it. That's how you build an instant cloud flow in Power Apps to implementing your Dynamics 365 system. So I hope this helps and we'll have more flow for you coming soon.